Well, chat GPT, you would have heard of it by now, has become a phenomena since its launch just last year, most prominently among university students who use the technology to generate essays. It's prompted a discussion about the consequences of unchecked artificial intelligence. And while it's not a completely unregulated space here in Australia, there are concerns the law isn't keeping up with the growing with the growth of these technologies. Joining me now is Macquarie University Technology Law Professor Nilafer Selvadure. I hope I've got your name right. Thank you so much for your time, Professor. Really appreciate it. How concerned should we be by chat GPT and other AI? Thank you very much, Laura. It's lovely to be with you today. Yes, so there are a variety of concerns to do with AI, short term, medium term, long term, but there are also huge benefits in terms of efficiency and innovation. So we need to calibrate the risks and rewards. So in terms of short term risk, immediate risk right now, it's the greatest threat is probably misinformation. So people dealing with uh, chat GPT and other generative AIs which create content, they use natural language processing to create content that is really human-like. They may not realize that they're engaging with a bot. They may not be able to distinguish reality and truth from AI-generated content. And medium term, there's issues to do with, of course, job loss. A US open AI study estimates that chat GPT, uh, in terms of the US workforce, 80% of the US workforce may have 10% or, or more of their work tasks impacted by chat GPT and other generative AI. And of course, long term, the threat is that they can get more smart than humans and lead to a loss of human control and mm. human autonomy. So with AI like chat GPT, where do they draw their information from? Is it the entirety of the, the internet, whatever information is available on the World Wide Web and they collate that at lightning speed. Is that how it works? Yes, yeah, so essentially it's the internet is the source of the data and there are various data sets which are available which they combine and they troll and we've got amazing data harvesting and mining technologies and then they put this natural language processing uh, algorithm using that material which has been available for decades and they create this very human-like uh, engine that can replicate, to some extent, human thought processes and reasoning and conversational styles. Mm. So that's what new is this natural language processing which overlays all this data that's been on the internet for a while. Yeah, there have been pretty dire warnings. I know, you know, the godfather of AI in the UK has um, issued some pretty dire warnings about AI and where it's all going, you know, saying it, it could be uh, the end of democracy, um, it could really affect the way we live our lives. Are you that pessimistic about it? No. So he, Jeffrey Hinton, who was a sort of founder of this whole area of technology, has said as exactly what you said. And he said it's difficult, I think, if I could quote him, difficult for human actors to control it. And I'd agree it's difficult and it's hard to see. He uses the word hard to see. But I don't think it's impossible. So we do have a variety of existing laws, as you mentioned, that apply to AI or can be reimagined to support responsible AI. So we have things like the Civil Liability Act, which stops or prohibits mis negligent misstatement. And the concept of duty of care is very, um, it's not static. It can evolve to encompass all AI entities from the full life cycle of development to use. We yeah. have protection laws, anti-discrimination laws. So there are laws, so we're not starting from scratch. Yeah, but we, we don't seem to be keeping up with it, Professor. I mean, chat GPT, you know, is being used uh, quite prolifically by uh, students at the moment. Uh, many in business are starting to use it as well. Very simply, if you're using AI or AI is used for anything in, um, in academic work or in the business community or in general life, wouldn't it be simple enough to have a, have a warning that some of the content or all the content is generated by AI and why isn't that being done? 
I know. So warnings would be a great step. And ChatGPT also has little things about copyright, which it then maybe goes and infringes consciously on or unconsciously. So warnings are a great, great start, as you suggest. But we could also have things like AI liability and laws, which help people get evidence as to what this, uh, uh, chat GPT and AI is doing and how it's operating. Because a big problem for people trying to protect their rights or copyright rights or other rights mm. is the opaqueness, the lack of transparency. And the European Union has this really nifty little AI liability directive they put out in September last year, which gives you access to AI. So if AI did something uh, and there's some sort of harm, they create this rebuttable presumption of causality where you assume the AI did it, they're responsible mm. unless proven otherwise, which well, sort of can help people protect their rights. Yeah, very well said. Well, Professor Nilufa Saldure, we appreciate your time this morning. We'll speak again. This is not going away. We'll see you soon. All right. Pleasure. Thank you.